Assalamu alaikum. If you're a student in a Quran program to memorize the Quran, then the Quran intuitive workshop is a must for you. You must attend this program. It's going to be extremely beneficial. You will learn the tools and the skills to really strengthen your hifth to make your memorization easy and to make your review and your revision very strong inshallah ta'ala and if you're a parent whose child is in a hifth program to memorize the quran then this is going to be extremely beneficial for you also you're going to be able to guide and help your child to bond with the quran as they're memorizing it what happens in hifth program is that when a student notices difficulty in a surah they want to know what the surah is talking about to help them memorize the surah. Or they want to find patterns and similarities in the surah to help them memorize the surah. And what happens is that when the student goes to read the translation, it's very difficult to connect the translation to the surah in Arabic. It's very difficult. And what I do in the Quran Intuitive Workshop, just five days, is that I teach you the skills and the tools to be able to make those connections. It's not advanced. It's not going to take you deep into the Arabic language. No, the tools and skills to be able to connect. When you're reading the translation, you'll be like, oh, this is why this means this. Oh, this is the translation of this part because I know this. I'll share with you in this video with a few examples what I mean by this. Just five days in the evening, you're going to get all those tools and skills so that revision will become very easy. Memorization of new surahs will become easy and revision will become very strong because you'll understand how the translation connects to the surahs that you're memorizing, inshallah ta'ala. So it's going to support on top of finding patterns and similarities within the surah, on top of understanding the differences between two surahs and the mutashabihat, you're going to understand, you're going to be able to connect the translation to the Arabic of the surah. So let me start with the example here from Surah Al-Buruj. The beginning of the surah typically is pretty easy. Once you get to halfway, a lot of you will remember when you were starting off and you were memorizing Surah Al-Buruj, you might have had trouble at the in the middle of the surah with these big ayahs. Possibly after memorizing the surah, after finishing Juz Amma, this middle page was a little bit harder because of all the places that has Inna al-ladhina, illa al-ladhina, inna al-ladhina amanu, illa al-ladhina amanu, and similar things. On top of that, you also might have noticed this uh, This causes difficulty for some students. Uh, students will end up saying, you know, يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد الذين له, and then you get lost. Because الذي is not very common, الذين is a lot more common as it is in the next ayah, الذين, and the, the ayah after that, الذين, and all over the place in Juzamma. So, الذي has to be الذي without the noon because الذي is for one person. And Allah is one person. Allah is Al-Aziz, Al-Hamid, and so he's one, so al is for one person. Versus, in the next ayah, al is for those people, not just one person. So, al fatanu al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat, those who harm the believers. Then what's going to be their consequence? فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ This lahum tells you what the consequence is for the people who do this. فَلَهُمْ then their consequence. Then, for them, what's going to be the result? And, for them. So this is what the lahum does. And as a result, when you get to the next ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Many students here, they get stuck. They say, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالْحَقِّ No, that's not it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُونَ غَيْرُ No, that's not it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ No, that's not it. Ah, oh, what is it? This frustration is very easy to alleviate if you know these tools and skills that I teach in the Quran Intuitive Workshop. Here, very straightforward, falahum is the consequence, the outcome for the people who do this. So here, lahum is also the consequence and the outcome for the people who do this. These patterns, if you know, you might have noticed the pattern. You might have noticed falahum, then walahum, and then lahum. You might have noticed this. You might have even noticed that Lahum is also in the previous surah. You might have noticed this. But now that you know what lahum means, how it connects to the translation, it makes it a lot easier to remember this surah and to fully understand the flow and be able to recite it fluently. This is one example. Let me give you another example here from Surah Al-Mursalat. Surah Al-Mursalat is notorious for the pattern of وَيْلُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِلْ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ that comes ten times in the surah. The first three are followed with alam. Alam is a rhetorical question. Didn't this happen? Didn't Allah do this for you? Allah is saying, didn't we do this for you? 
So three of them followed with alam. Alam didn't, didn't we, didn't he, didn't this happen? So you had the first one up here, alam nuhlik. And then you have the second one here, alam nakhlukkum. And then you have the third one over here, alam naja'ali al-arda kifata. You might have noticed this pattern. Knowing what alam means will make the pattern stick a lot more. Knowing what alam means and understanding how this connects to the meaning of the surah that you might read in the translation will make your revision a lot easier. When you go back to Surah Al-Mursalat in your, in your daur, in your sabaq, in your, in your revision, then you're going to see, you're going to remember. I remember what alam means. I remember that this is Allah asking rhetorically, didn't we do this, didn't we do that, didn't we do that. You don't have to go deep in the translation. Just these simple tools and skills will really help you in your memorization of new surahs and in your solidification of old surahs. Something I want to add here from Surah Al-Mursalat is many students, they get um, they make a mistake here and they will end this ayah after, when they finish memorizing Juz Tabarak, this ayah becomes a mistake. وَجَعَلْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَ شَامِخَاتٍ وَأَسْقَيْنَا هُمَّا أَنْفُرَاتَ Many students make this mistake. They say هُمْ instead of كُمْ. So number one, you might have already done the job of finding out what surah has أَسْقَيْنَا هُمْ That's Surah Al-Jinn. In the same juz. This is أَسْقَيْنَا كُمْ So you might have already noticed the mutashabiha between the two ayahs. But there's a simple way to connect the two together to know what كُمْ means and notice that كُمْ on أَسْقَيْنَا كُمْ matches the kum of alam nakhlukkum. I was just telling you that these are three alam, alam, alam. Alam, alam, and above on the previous page, alam. These three, they are rhetorical question. Allah is asking, think about it. Think about it. Didn't we do this and this and this and this? So, alam goes with the kum because Allah is asking you a question. And the kum here matches with the kum there. Versus Surah Al-Jinn, where the hum now means they, not you anymore. Because Surah Al-Jinn is discussing what the jinns are telling each other and thinking about people. And the, and the word hum comes. Actually, in Surah Al-Jinn, أَسْقَيْنَا هُمْ مَا أَنْغَدَقَ لِنَفْتِنَا هُمْ fi. So you might have noticed the patterns, knowing what those small things mean and how they connect with the translation is going to be very helpful in Remembering the surahs for the long term. A third example I'm going to share with you in this video is Surah Al-Fatr. Maybe you've reached that surah in your memorization. Look at how powerful it is to be able to connect some small words with the translation that you're reading, if you read the translation. Definitely, Surah Al-Fatr without translation is very difficult. Surah Al-Fatr with translation and being able to connect just a few things to be able to know, okay, so this is where this is talking about this. Is, it makes this surah probably one of the easiest surahs in the Qur'an. And probably the same thing is true for Surah Muhammad right before Surah Al-Fatr. So let me go over a little bit of Surah Al-Fatr. Surah Al-Fatr starts at Hudaybiyah. Okay? The Muslims went to Mecca and they were prevented from doing the Umrah that the Messenger had seen in his dream. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the first part is discussing this particular incident. This is happening because Allah is promising you a victory that's going to come near. Don't worry. Allah will reward the believers. Al-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat. Allah will give their consequence to the hypocrites and munafiqeen wal-Munafiqat and the idol worshippers and mushrikeen wal-Mushrikat. By the way, this is a pattern you might have noticed. Many times students will say, لِيُدْخِلَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Instead of لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ why? Because this phrase, لِيُدْخِلَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ comes in other surahs. The pattern is consistent here. المؤمنين والمؤمنات here. المنافقين والمنافقات below. المشركين والمشركات. So this is just a simple pattern. Knowing that this is what Allah tells, Allah gives comfort to the believers who were prevented from entering Mecca. Don't worry, this is a victory. You're signing a treaty, it'll be a victory. So... This is the signing of the treaty or the agreement that they are settling with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then from Ayah 11, سَيَقُولُ لَكَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ You might have noticed the pattern. سَيَقُولُ لَكَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ Then at the bottom of the page, سَيَقُولُ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ And then on the next page, قُلْ لِلْمُخَلَّفِينَ Right? So understanding what this is about is very helpful. This is now Allah explaining to the believers what was the mindset and what will be the outcome of the people who did not want to come with them to Mecca. They felt like the believers were going to their destruction. They saw a dream, the Prophet saw a dream, they didn't believe in this dream. 
They thought that all these believers who were going to Mecca because of this dream, they're going to their own destruction. People in Medina, they felt this way. They were hypocrites. They felt that all the Muslims are going to die and they're never going to come back from this thing because they're going straight to their enemy. They're not going to come back from this journey. This is what some people, Allah calls them the mukhallafun, those who stayed behind. And He discusses them in this part of the surah. He discusses, they claim that they didn't go because they were too busy. In reality, they didn't go because they felt that the believers would never come back from this journey. Yet, when later on, this is now important because this is how you are able to package the whole surah together. The bottom of the page here is when later on, once the Muslims did come back to Medina, Surah Al-Fatih is telling the messenger ahead of time, these people who stayed back and did not come with you, they're going to be the ones saying, when you go to collect some money, they're going to say, oh, we want to come there. We want to come with you there because you're collecting a lot of money. And this is, what is a lot of money? Maghanima. This word maghanim causes confusion for students memorizing the surah. Maghanim over here, uh, ila maghanim. And then on the next page, after the little star over here, you have uh, over here, uh, what is this again? Wa maghanim yakhudunaha. And next ayah, wa adakumullahu maghanim kathiratan ta'khudunaha. So the maghanim and the few ayahs like this, they're confusing when you're memorizing the surah. Understanding just the gist of what Allah is saying is very important and very useful. So Allah here was discussing the response of these people who stayed behind because of the danger, how they're going to react when they're called to go to collect some money with no danger. They're going to want to come to collect these maghanim, this money. And so this passage up to here discusses these people who stayed behind. Now Allah goes to a different topic. Allah now talks about the people who actually did go to make Umrah and were prevented from entering Mecca and had to sign the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. These people, Allah discusses that He is happy with them and because they followed the Messenger وسلم, because they sacrificed their time and got into the situation that was dangerous and felt, and many people felt it was very dangerous, Allah is pleased with them and Allah promises them that they will collect, collect these maghanim. So the first thing Allah says is that He has, because of their courage, because of their discipline and following the Messenger وسلم, and support of the Messenger, Allah has guaranteed for them a nearby victory, a close victory and a lot of maghanim. Kathira, a lot of maghanim. A lot of wealth is going to fall on their lap because of their courage. Allah now turns to them and speaks to them directly. Allah has promised you a lot of maghanim that you are going to take. So here Allah promised them, those believers. Now He talks to them and says Allah promised you. So ta'khudun is for the you. Ya'khudunaha, they will take. Ta'khudunaha, you will take. So these are the tools that I share in the workshop. You're going to be able to understand the ya'khudunaha means they. When you see the translation, you're going to see that this means they. Ta'khudunaha, you. You will understand from the workshop that this means you. I'm not going to go deep into the grammar. Instead, I'm just going to show you that this is how you connect with the translation. Same thing. You're going to understand the difference between qul lil mukhallafin versus sayaqulul mukhallafun. These sounds at the end of the, of the words like this. You're going to understand this. I'm going to give you these tools to be able to understand how this comes together. So that when you're reading the translation of the surah, if it's a difficult surah and you feel you need to read the translation to get it, you don't have to deeply study the translation. You don't have to memorize this translation. You don't have to be able to translate word for word. All you need to do is to be able to read the translation so that you have an idea what the surah is talking about and make just a few connections. Ah, this is where the people who stayed behind, Allah talks about them. This is where Allah talks about the promise that He's going to give the believers things and this is where He talks to them saying, that this is what he's going to give them. Just making a few connection, connections will make your hif, your memorization, a lot easier. So please, if you are in a hif program, if you are in the process of memorizing the Qur'an, this five-day workshop is going to completely transform your experience. It's going to make it a lot easier to memorize and it's going to make it a, a, a lot more effective to review the surahs. Every time you review them, if you have that knowledge, if you have those tools and those skills, then the revision is going to be quicker and much more effective in the long term. 
inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. And as always, go ahead and watch the testimonials at the link to join the workshop. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.